Book of First Chronicles. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus, the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Rephath, and Togarmah, the sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, the Kittites, and the Rodanites, the sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan, the sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Reuma, and Sabtuka, the sons of Reuma, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on earth. Egypt was the father of the Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, Naphtahites, Hathrasites, Kashlahites, from whom the Philistines came, and Kaphtarites. Canaan was the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvadites, Zimmerites, and Hamathites, the sons of Shem, Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram, the sons of Aram, Uz, Hul, Githa, and Meshach. Arphaxad was the father of Shelah and Shelah the father of Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. One was named Pelik, because in his time the earth was divided. His brother was named Joktan. Joktan was the father of Almodad, Shelith, Hezarmavith, Jira, Hadorum, Yuzel, Dikla, Obul, Abimeel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were sons of Joktan. Shem, Arphaxid, Shela, Eber, Pelek, Riu, Sirak, Nahor, Terah, and Abram that is, Abraham, the sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael. These were their descendants, Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Naphish and Kedema. These were the sons of Ishmael. The sons born to Keturah, Abraham's concubine, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. The sons of Jokshan, Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Midian, Epha, Epha, Hanuk, Abida, and Eldea. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham was the father of Isaac, the sons of Isaac, 
Esau and Israel. The sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Ruel, Jeush, Jalem, and Korah. The sons of Eliphaz, Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatum, and Kenaz. By Timna, Amalek. The sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zira, Shama, and Mizza. The sons of Seor, Lotan, Shobul, Zibion, Ana, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. The sons of Lotan, Horai, and Homam. Timna was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobul, Alvin, Manuhath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. The sons of Zibion, Ea and Ana. The son of Ana, Dishan. The sons of Dishan, Himdan, Eshban, Ithran and Kiran. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zeovan, and Achan. The sons of Dishan, Uz and Aaron. These were the kings who reigned in Edom before any Israelite king reigned. Bela, son of Beor, whose city was named Deneba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zira from Basra, succeeded him as king. When Jobab died, Husham from the land of the Timonites succeeded him as king. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, succeeded him as king. His city was named Aphith. When Hadad died, Samla from Masraka succeeded him as king. When Samla died, Shul from Rehoboth on the river succeeded him as king. When Shul died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, succeeded him as king. When Baal Hanan died, Hadad succeeded him as king. His city was named Pau, and his wife's name was Mehetabel, daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mizahab. Hadad also died. The chiefs of Edom were Timna, Alva, Jephith, Oholibama, Elah, Pinan, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom. These were the sons of Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The sons of Judah, Ur, Onan, and Shelah. These three were born to him by a Canaanite woman, the daughter of Shua. Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death. Judah's daughter-in-law, Tamar, bore Perez and Zerah to Judah. He had five sons in all. The sons of Perez, Hezron, and Hamul. The sons of Zerah, Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calcol, and Darda. Five in all. The son of Carmi, Achar, who brought trouble on Israel by violating the ban on taking devoted things. The son of Ethan, Azariah. The sons born to Hezron were Jeremiel, Ram, and Caleb. 
Ram was the father of Aminadab, and Aminadab the father of Nation, the leader of the people of Judah. Nation was the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, Boaz the father of Obed, and Obed the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of Eliab, his firstborn. The second son was Abinadab, the third Shemiah, the fourth Nethanel, the fifth Radai, the sixth Ozum, and the seventh David. Their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. Zeruiah's three sons were Abishai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail was the mother of Amasa, whose father was Jetha, the Ishmaelite. Caleb, son of Hezron, had children by his wife Azuba and by Jeriath. These were her sons, Jeshur, Shobab, and Arden. When Azuba died, Caleb married Ephrath, who bore him Hur. Hur was the father of Uri, and Uri the father of Bezalel. Later, Hezron, when he was sixty years old, married the daughter of Machir, the father of Gilead. He made love to her, and she bore him Segub. Segub was the father of Jair, who controlled 23 towns in Gilead. But Geshur and Aram captured Havath Jair, as well as Keneth, with its surrounding settlements, 60 towns. All these were descendants of Machir, the father of Gilead. After Hezron died in Caleb Ephrathah, Abijah, the wife of Hezron, bore him Asher, the father of Tekoa. The sons of Jeremiel, the firstborn of Hezron, Ram, his firstborn, Beuna, Oren, Ozim, and Ahijah. Jeremiel had another wife whose name was Atara. She was the mother of Onam. The sons of Ram, the firstborn of Jeremiel, Maaz, Jamin, and Eker. The sons of Onam, Shammai and Jada. The sons of Shammai, Nadab and Abisha. Abisha's wife was named Abihail, who bore him Aben and Molin. The sons of Nadab, Selit, and Apaim. Selit died without children. The son of Apaim, Ishai, who was the father of Shishan. Shishan was the father of Alai. The sons of Jada, Shammai's brother, Jetha and Jonathan. Jetha died without children. The sons of Jonathan, Peleth and Zaza. These were the descendants of Jeremiel. Shishan had no sons, only daughters. He had an Egyptian servant named Jarha. Shishan gave his daughter in marriage to his servant Jarha, and she bore him Atai. Atai was the father of Nathan. Nathan, the father of Zabit. Zabit the father of Ephlo, Ephlo the father of Obed, Obed the father of Jehu, Jehu the father of Azariah, Azariah the father of Helis, Helis the father of Eliasa, Eliasa the father of Sismai, Sismai the father of Shalom, Shalom the father of Jechemiah and Jechemiah the father of Elishama, the sons of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiah. Misha, his firstborn, who was the father of Sif, and his son, Marisha, who was the father of Hebron. 
the sons of Hebron, Korah, Tapua, Regan, and Shema. Shema was the father of Rahan, and Rahan the father of Chorkiam. Rechim was the father of Shammai. The son of Shammai was Maon, and Maon was the father of Beth Zer. Caleb's concubine Ephah was the mother of Haran, Moza, and Gases. Haran was the father of Gases. The sons of Jadai, Regum, Jotham, Geshen, Pelet, Ephah, and Sheaf. Caleb's concubine Meuka was the mother of Sheba and Terhena. She also gave birth to Sheaf, the father of Madmana, and to Shiva, the father of Machbina, and Gibeah. Caleb's daughter was Aksa. These were the descendants of Caleb. The sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah. Shobal, the father of Kiriath Jeoram. Salma, the father of Bethlehem. And Harif, the father of Beth Gader. The descendants of Shobal, the father of Kiriath Jeoram, were Haroah, half the Manohathites, and the clans of Kiriath Jeoram, the Ithrites, Puthites, Shumathites, and Misraites. From these descended the Zorathites and Eshtaelites. The descendants of Salma, Bethlehem, the Netophathites, Athroth Beth Joab, half the Manohathites, the Zorites, and the clans of scribes who lived at Javis, the Tirathites, Shimeathites, and Sukkothites. These are the Kenites who came from Hamath, the father of the house of Rechab. These were the sons of David born to him in Hebron. The firstborn was Amnon, the son of Ahinoam of Jezreel. The second, Daniel, the son of Abigail, of Carmel. The third, Absalom, the son of Meuka, daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. The fifth, Shephatiah, the son of Abital. And the sixth, Ethereum, by his wife Egla. These six were born to David in Hebron, where he reigned seven years and six months. David reigned in Jerusalem 33 years, and these were the children born to him there. Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. These four were by Bathsheba, daughter of Amiel. There were also Ibhar, Elishua, Eliphalet, Noga, Nephik, Jephiah, Elishima, Eliada, and Eliphalet, nine in all. All these were the sons of David, besides his sons by his concubines, and Tamar was their sister. Solomon's son was Rehoboam, Abijah his son, Asa, his son, Jehoshaphat, his son, Jehoram, his son, Ahuziah, his son, Joash, his son, Amaziah, his son, Azariah, his son, Jotham, his son, Ahaz, his son, Hezekiah, his son, Manasseh, his son, Ammon, his son, Josiah, his son. The sons of Josiah, Johanan, the firstborn, Jehoiakim, the second son, Zedekiah, the third, 
Shalom IV. The successors of Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim his son, and Zedekiah. The descendants of Jehoiakim, the captive, Shealtiel his son, Malchiram, Pideah, Shenazar, Jechemiah, Hoshima, and Nedabiah. The sons of Pideah, Zerubbabel and Shimei. The sons of Zerubbabel, Meshulam and Hanuniah. Shilometh was their sister. There were also five others, Peshuba, Ohel, Berechiah, Hasadiah, and Jushab Hesed. The descendants of Hananiah, Pelatiah, and Jesheah, and the sons of Rephaiah, of Arnon, of Obadiah, and of Shechaniah. The descendants of Shechaniah, Shemaiah and his sons, Hattush, Igel, Uriah, Neariah, and Shaphat, six in all. The sons of Neariah, Elioenai, Hizkiah, and Azricam, three in all. The sons of Elioenai, Hodaviah, Eliashib, Peleah, Akub, Johanan, Deleah, and Unani, seven in all. The descendants of Judah. Kiriz, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. Reah, son of Shobal, was the father of Jahath, and Jahath the father of Ahumai and Lahad. These were the clans of the Zorathites. These were the sons of Etam, Jezreel, Ishma, and Idbash. Their sister was named Hazelilponai. Penuel was the father of Gedor, and Ezer, the father of Husha. These were the descendants of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah, and the father of Bethlehem. Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hela and Neorah. Neorah bore him Ahuzam, Hepha, Temanai, and Heuhashtari. These were the descendants of Neorah. The sons of Hela, Zerith, Zohar, Ethnan, and Kaz, who was the father of Anab and Hazobiba, and of the clans of Aparhel, son of Haram. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Caleb, Shua's brother, was the father of Meher, who was the father of Eshton. Eshton was the father of beth Rapha, Pusia and Tahina, the father of Ur-Nahash. These were the men of Rika the sons of Kenaz, Othniel, and Zerea, the sons of Othniel, Hathath, and Mianothai. Mianothai was the father of Ophrah. Zerea was the father of Joab, the father of Giharashim. It was called this because its people were skilled workers. The sons of Caleb, son of Jephunneh, Iru, Elah, and Nahum, the son of Elah, Kenaz, the sons of Jehalalel, Ziph, Zipha, Teria, and Aserel, the sons of Ezra, Jether, Merit, Epher, and Jalen. One of Merit's wives gave birth to Miriam. Shammai 
and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoa. His wife from the tribe of Judah gave birth to Jared, the father of Geder, Heber, the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zenoah. These were the children of Pharaoh's daughter, Bithiah, whom Merid had married, the sons of Hodiah's wife, the sister of Nahab, the father of Keilah the Garmite, and Eshtemoa the Baugathite, the sons of Shimon, Amnon, Rena, Ben-Hanan, and Tilan, the descendants of Ishai, Zoheth and Ben-Zoheth, the sons of Shelah, son of Judah, Ur, the father of Leka, Leuda, the father of Marisha, and the clans of the linen workers at Beth Ashbia. Jochim, the men of Kosiba, and Joash and Sarif, who ruled in Moab, and Jashaba Lehim. These records are from ancient times. They were the potters who lived at Netaim and Gedera. They stayed there and worked for the king. The descendants of Simeon, Nemuel, Jamin, Jareb, Zerah, and Shaul. Shalom was Shaul's son, Mipsam his son, and Mishma his son. The descendants of Mishma, Hamuel his son, Zacher his son, and Shimei his son. Shimei had 16 sons and six daughters, but his brothers did not have many children. So their entire clan did not become as numerous as the people of Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Molida, Hazer Shul, Bilhah, Ezem, Tolad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markabeth, Hazer Susim, Beth Birai, and Sheurayim. These were their towns until the reign of David. Their surrounding villages were Etam, Ain, Rimmon, Token and Asian, five towns and all the villages around these towns as far as Baalath. These were their settlements, and they kept a genealogical record. Mishoba, Jamlik, Josha, son of Amaziah, Joel, Jehu, son of Joshabiah, the son of Sarah the son of Asiel, also Elioenai, Jeukaba, Jeshuhea, Usea, Adiel, Jesimiel, Binea, and Ziza, son of Shiphai, the son of Alan, the son of Jedea, the son of Shimrai, the son of Shemea. The men listed above by name were leaders of their clans. Their families increased greatly, and they went to the outskirts of Gidor to the east of the valley in search of pasture for their flocks. They found rich, good pasture, and the land was spacious, peaceful, and quiet. Some Hamites had lived there formerly. The men whose names were listed came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. They attacked the Hamites in their dwellings, and also the Meunites who were there, and completely destroyed them, as is evident to this day. Then they settled in their place, because there was pasture for their flocks, and 500 of these Simeonites, led by Pelotiah, Neariah, Rephaiah, and Uziel, the sons of Ishai, invaded the hill country of Seir. They killed the remaining Amalekites who had escaped, and they have lived there to this day. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. He was the firstborn, but when he defiled his father's marriage bed, his rights as firstborn were given to the sons of Joseph, son of Israel. So he could not be listed in the genealogical record in accordance with his birthright, 
And though Judah was the strongest of his brothers, and a ruler came from him, the rights of the firstborn belonged to Joseph, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel, Shimeah his son, Gog his son, Shimei his son, Micah his son, Rhea his son, Baal his son, and Beera his son, whom tiglath pileser king of Assyria took into exile. Beera was a leader of the Reubenites, their relatives by clans, listed according to their genealogical records. Jehu, the chief, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel. They settled in the area from Aurora to Nebo and baal Mean. To the east, they occupied the land up to the edge of the desert that extends to the Euphrates River because their livestock had increased in Gilead. During Saul's reign, they raged war against the Hagrites, who were defeated at their hands. They occupied the dwellings of the Hagrites throughout the entire region east of Gilead. The Gadites lived next to them in Bashan, as far as Saluka. Joel was the chief, Shaphan the second, then Janai and Shaphat in Bashan. Their relatives by families were Michael, Mishalem, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Zia, and Eber, seven in all. These were the sons of Abihail, son of Hurai, the son of Jeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshishai, the son of Jado, the son of Buzz. Ahai, son of Abdil, the son of Gunai, was head of their family. The Gadites lived in Gilead, in Bashan, and its outlying villages, and on all the pasture lands of Sharon, as far as they extended. All these were entered in the genealogical records during the reigns of Jotham, king of Judah, and Jeroboam, king of Israel. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had 44,760 men ready for military service, able-bodied men who could handle shield and sword, who could use a bow, and who were trained for battle. They waged war against the Hagrites, Jeter, Naphish, and Nodam. They were helped in fighting them, and God delivered the Hagrites and all their allies into their hands, because they cried out to him during the battle. He answered their prayers because they trusted in him. They seized the livestock of the Hagrites, 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, and 2,000 donkeys. They also took 100,000 people captive and many others fell slain because the battle was God's and they occupied the land until the exile. The people of the half-tribe of Manasseh were numerous. They settled in the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, that is, to Sinur, Mount Hermon. These were the heads of their families, Ephra, Ishai, Eliel, Azriel, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel. They were brave warriors, famous men, and heads of their families. But they were unfaithful to the God of their ancestors and prostituted themselves to the gods of the peoples of the land whom God had destroyed before them. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, that is, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, who took the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh into exile. He took them to Hala, Haber, Hara, and the river of Gozen, where they are to this day. The Sons of Levi 
Gershon, Kohath, and Mirari, the sons of Kohath, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel, the children of Amram, Aaron, Moses, and Miriam, the sons of Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar was the father of Phinehas, Phinehas the father of Abishua, Abishua the father of Bukai, Bukai the father of Uzai, Uzai the father of Zerahiah, Zerahiah the father of Meraeth, Meraeth the father of Amariah, Amariah the father of Ahitub, Ahitub the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Ahimeaz, Ahimeaz the father of Azariah, Azariah the father of Johanan, Johanan the father of Azariah. It was he who served as priest in the temple Solomon built in Jerusalem. Azariah the father of Amariah, Amariah the father of Ahitub, Ahitub the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Shalom, Shalom the father of Hilkiah, Hilkiah the father of Azariah, Azariah the father of Sarea, and Sarea the father of Josadak. Josadak was deported when the Lord sent Judah and Jerusalem into exile by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni and Shimei. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Merari, Malai and Mushai. These are the clans of the Levites, listed according to their fathers. Of Gershon, Libni his son, Jahath his son, Zima his son, Joah his son, Ido his son, Zira his son, and Jeatharai his son. The descendants of Kohath, Aminadab his son, Korah his son, Aser his son, Elkanah his son, Ebiasaph his son, Aser his son, Tehath his son, Uriel his son, Uzziah his son, and Shaul his son. The descendants of Elkanah Amasai, Ahimoth, Elkanah his son, Zophai his son, Nahath his son, Eliab his son, Jeroham his son, Elkanah his son, and Samuel his son. The sons of Samuel, Joel the firstborn, and Abijah the second son. The descendants of Mirari, Malai, Libni, his son, Shimei, his son, Uzzah, his son, Shemia, his son, Haggaiah, his son, and Uzziah, his son. These are the men David put in charge of the music in the house of the Lord after the ark came to rest there. They ministered with music before the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They performed their duties according to the regulations laid down for them. Here are the men who served together with their sons. From the Kohathites, Heman the musician, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, 
the son of Toa, the son of Zaf, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Aser, the son of Ibiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Heman's associate Asaph, who served at his right hand. Asaph, son of Berechiah, the son of Shemiah, the son of Michael, the son of Baoseah, the son of Malchijah, the son of Ephni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adaiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zimmah, the son of Shimei, the son of Jahath, the son of Gershon, the son of Levi. And from their associates, the Mirarites, at his left hand, Ethan, son of Kishai, the son of Abdi, the son of Malak, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzai, the son of Benai, the son of Shemer, the son of Malai, the son of Mushai, the son of Mirari, the son of Levi. Their fellow Levites were assigned to all the other duties of the tabernacle, the house of God. But Aaron and his descendants were the ones who presented offerings on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense in connection with all that was done in the most holy place, making atonement for Israel in accordance with all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. These were the descendants of Aaron, Eleazar, his son, Phinehas, his son, Abishua, his son, Bukai, his son, Ozai, his son, Zerahiah, his son, Miraeth, his son, Amariah, his son, Ahitab, his son, Zadok, his son, and Ahimeaz, his son. These were the locations of their settlements allotted as their territory. They were assigned to the descendants of Aaron, who were from the Kohathite clan, because the first lot was for them. They were given Hebron in Judah with its surrounding pasture lands, but the fields and villages around the city were given to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So the descendants of Aaron were given Hebron, a city of refuge, and Libna, Jeter, Eshtemoa, Hylan, Deber, Ashan, Jutta, and Beth Shemesh, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Benjamin, they were given Gibeon, Geba, Alameth, and Anathoth, together with their pasture lands. The total number of towns distributed among the Kohathite clans came to 13. The rest of Kohath's descendants were allotted ten towns from the clans of half the tribe of Manasseh. The descendants of Gershon, clan by clan, were allotted thirteen towns from the tribes of Issachar, Asher, and Naphtali, and from the part of the tribe of Manasseh that is in Bashan. The descendants of Mirari, clan by clan, were allotted twelve towns from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the Israelites gave the Levites these towns and their pasture lands. From the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin, they allotted the previously named towns. Some of the Kohathite clans were given as their territory towns from the tribe of Ephraim. In the hill country of Ephraim, they were given Shechem, a city of refuge, and Gezer, Jachmium, Beth Horon, Ijalon, and Gath Rimen together with their pasture lands. 
And from half the tribe of Manasseh, the Israelites gave Aner and Bileam, together with their pasture lands, to the rest of the Kohathite clans. The Gershonites received the following. From the clan of the half-tribe of Manasseh, they received Golan in Bashan and also Ashtaroth, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Issachar, they received Kedish, Dabareth, Ramoth, and Anam, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Asher, they received Meshul, Abdon, Hukuk, and Rehob, together with their pasture lands, and from the tribe of Naphtali, they received Kedish in Galilee, Hammon, and Kiriathaim, together with their pasture lands. The Mirarites, the rest of the Levites, received the following. From the tribe of Zebulun, they received Jachnian, Karta, Ramona, and Tabor, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Reuben, across the Jordan, east of Jericho, they received Bezer in the wilderness, Jaza, Kedemoth, and Mephaeth, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Gad, they received Ramoth in Gilead, Mehunaim, Heshbon and Jazer together with their pasture lands. The sons of Issachar, Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron, four in all. The sons of Tola, Uzai, Rephaiah, Jeriel, Jamai, Ibsam, and Samuel, heads of their families. During the reign of David, the descendants of Tola listed as fighting men in their genealogy numbered 22,600. The son of Uzai, Israhiah. The sons of Israhiah, Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishiah. All five of them were chiefs. According to their family genealogy, they had 36,000 men ready for battle for they had many wives and children. The relatives who were fighting men belonging to all the clans of Issachar, as listed in their genealogy, were 87,000 in all. Three sons of Benjamin, Bela, Beker, and Jediel. The sons of Bela, Espen, Uzai, Uziel, Jeremoth, and Irai, heads of families, five in all. Their genealogical record listed 22,034 fighting men. The sons of Beaker, Samira, Joash, Eliezer, Elioenai, Omri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Alameth. All these were the sons of Beaker. Their genealogical record listed the heads of families and 20,200 fighting men. The son of Jediel, Bilhan. The sons of Bilhan, Jeush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kineuna, Zethan, Tarshish, and Uhishahar. All these sons of Jediel were heads of families there were 17,200 fighting men ready to go out to war. The Shuppites and Huppites were the descendants of Ur, and the Hushites the descendants of Ahur. The sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Gunai, Jezer, and Shilam, the descendants of Bilha. The descendants of Manasseh, Asriel, was his descendant through his Aramean concubine. She gave birth to Makir, the father of Gilead. Makir took a wife from among the Huppites and Shuppites. His sister's name was Meuka. Another descendant was named Zelophehad, who had only daughters. Makir's wife Meuka gave birth to a son and named him Pirish. His brother was named Shirish, and his sons were Ulam and Rakim, the son of Ulam, Bedan. These were the sons of Gilead, son of Makir,
the son of Manasseh. His sister, Hamalaketh, gave birth to Ishad, Abaiza, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ahian, Shechem, Likhai, and Anayim, the descendants of Ephraim, Shuthala, Berit his son, Tehath his son, Eliada his son, Tehath his son, Zabed his son, and Shuthala his son. Ezer and Eliot were killed by the native-born men of Gath when they went down to seize their livestock. Their father Ephraim mourned for them many days, and his relatives came to comfort him. Then he made love to his wife again, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. He named him Beriah because there had been misfortune in his family. His daughter was Shira, who built Lower and Upper Beth Horon, as well as Uzan Shira. Repha was his son, Reshef his son, Tila his son, Tehan his son, Laden his son, Amayad his son, Elishima his son, Nun his son, and Joshua his son. Their lands and settlements included Bethel and its surrounding villages, Naorun to the east, Gezer and its villages to the west, and Shechem and its villages all the way to Ea and its villages. Along the borders of Manasseh were Bethshan, Teonak, Megiddo, and Dor, together with their villages. The descendants of Joseph, son of Israel, lived in these towns. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Beriah. Their sister was Sira. The sons of Beriah, Heber and Malchiel, who was the father of Birzaeth. Heber was the father of Japhlet, Shomer, and Hotham, and of their sister Shua. The sons of Japhlet. Pesach, Bimhal, and Ashvath. These were Japhlet's sons. The sons of Shomer, Ahai, Roga, Hubba, and Aram. The sons of his brother Helam, Zopha, Imna, Shelish, and Amul. The sons of Zopha, Sua, Harnifer, Shul, Birai, Imra, Bezer, Had, Shama, Shilsha, Ithran, and Bira, the sons of Jether, Jephuna, Pispa, and Ara, the sons of Ula, Ara, Haniel, and Reziah. All these were descendants of Asher, heads of families, choice men, brave warriors, and outstanding leaders. The number of men ready for battle, as listed in their genealogy, was 26,000. Benjamin was the father of Bela, his firstborn, Ashbel, the second son, Ohara, the third, Noah, the fourth, and Rapha, the fifth. The sons of Bela were Adar, Gira, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoya, Gira, Shephuphan, and Huram. These were the descendants of Ehud, who were heads of families of those living in Geba and were deported to Manohath. Naaman, Ahijah, and Gira, who deported them and who was the father of Uzzah and Ahiad. Sons were born to Shehuraim in Moab after he had divorced his wives, Hushim and Beorah. By his wife Hodesh, he had Jobab, Zebiah, Misha, Malcolm, Jeus, Sakiah, and Mirma. These were his sons, heads of families. 
By Hushim he had Abitab and Elpeel, the sons of Elpeel, Eber, Mishim, Shemit, who built Ono and Lod with its surrounding villages, and Beriah and Shema, who were heads of families of those living in Aijalon and who drove out the inhabitants of Gath. Ohio, Sheshach, Jeremoth, Zebediah, Arid, Eder, Michael, Ishpa, and Joha were the sons of Beriah, Zebediah, Mishalem, Hizkai, Heber, Ishmarai, Isliah, and Jobab were the sons of El Pael, Jacob, Zikri, Zabdi, Eliinai, Zilathai, Eliel, Adea, Berea, and Shimrath were the sons of Shimei, Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Athathijah, Iphdia, and Penuel were the sons of Sheshach, Shamshurai, Shehuriah, Athaliah, Jeurishiah, Elijah and Zikri were the sons of Jeroham. All these were heads of families, chiefs as listed in their genealogy, and they lived in Jerusalem. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Meuka, and his firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Geder, Ahio, Zekar, and Mikloth, who was the father of Shemia. They too lived near their relatives in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish, Kish the father of Saul, and Saul the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan, Mirab Baal, who was the father of Micah, the sons of Micah, Python, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jehoiada. Jehoiada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia. Repha was his son. Eliasa, his son. And Azel, his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names, Azrikam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel, the sons of his brother Eshik, Ulam, his firstborn, Jeush, the second son, and Eliphalet, the third. The sons of Ulam were brave warriors who could handle the bow. They had many sons and grandsons, 150 in all. All these were the descendants of Benjamin. All Israel was listed in the genealogies recorded in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. They were taken captive to Babylon because of their unfaithfulness. Now the first to resettle on their own property in their own towns were some Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants. Those from Judah, from Benjamin, and from Ephraim and Manasseh who lived in Jerusalem were Uthai, son of Amiad, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Benai, a descendant of Peres, son of Judah. Of the Shelonites, Asaiah the firstborn and his sons. Of the Zerahites, Jeul, the people from Judah numbered 690. Of the Benjamites, Salu, son of Mishalem, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hashanua, Ibnia, son of Jeroham, 
Elah, son of Uzai, the son of Mikri, and Mishalem, son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah. The people from Benjamin, as listed in their genealogy, numbered 956. All these men were heads of their families. Of the priests, Judea, Jehoiarib, Jachin, Azariah, son of Hilkiah, the son of Mishalem, the son of Zadok, the son of Mereath, the son of Ahitab, the official in charge of the house of God, Adaiah, son of Jeroham, the son of Pasher, the son of Milkaijah, and Meusai, son of Adil, the son of Jazura, the son of Mishalem, the son of Mishilameth, the son of Immer. The priests who were heads of families numbered 1,760. They were able men responsible for ministering in the house of God. Of the Levites, Shimea, son of Hashem, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, a Merarite, Bakbakar, Hirish, Galil, and Mataniah, son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shimea, the son of Galil, the son of Jejuthun, and Berechiah, son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Netophathites. The gatekeepers, Shalom, Akab, Talman, Ahiman, and their fellow Levites. Shalom, their chief, being stationed at the king's gate on the east up to the present time. These were the gatekeepers belonging to the camp of the Levites. Shalom, son of Kori, the son of Ibiasaph, the son of Korah, and his fellow gatekeepers from his family, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the thresholds of the tent, just as their ancestors had been responsible for guarding the entrance to the dwelling of the Lord. In earlier times, Phineas, son of Eleazar, was the official in charge of the gatekeepers, and the Lord was with him. Zechariah, son of Meshelemiah, was the gatekeeper at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Altogether, those chosen to be gatekeepers at the thresholds numbered 212. They were registered by genealogy in their villages. The gatekeepers had been assigned to their positions of trust by David and Samuel, the seer. They and their descendants were in charge of guarding the gates of the house of the Lord, the house called the Tent of Meeting. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their fellow Levites in their villages had to come from time to time and share their duties for seven-day periods. But the four principal gatekeepers, who were Levites, were entrusted with the responsibility for the rooms and treasuries in the house of God. They would spend the night stationed around the house of God because they had to guard it, and they had charge of the key for opening it each morning. Some of them were in charge of the articles used in the temple service. They counted them when they were brought in and when they were taken out. Others were assigned to take care of the furnishings and all the other articles of the sanctuary, as well as the special flour and wine and the oil incense and spices. But some of the priests took care of mixing the spices. A Levite named Mattathiah, the firstborn son of Shalom the Korahite, was entrusted with the responsibility for baking the offering bread. Some of the Korathites, their fellow Levites, were in charge of preparing for every Sabbath the bread set out on the table. Those who were musicians, heads of Levite families, stayed in the rooms of the temple and were exempt from other duties because they were responsible for the work day and night. All these were heads of Levite families, chiefs as listed in their genealogy, and they lived in Jerusalem. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Meuka, and his firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zer, Kish, 
Bale, Nur, Nadab, Gidor, Ohio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shimeon. They too lived near their relatives in Jerusalem. Nur was the father of Kish, Kish the father of Saul, and Saul the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan, Mirabal, who was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Python, Melik, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia. Rephaia was his son. Eliasa, his son, and Azel, his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names. Azrikam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him. Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and run me through, and these uncircumcised fellows will come and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. When all the Israelites in the valley saw that the army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled, and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news among their idols and their people. They put his armor in the temple of their gods and hung up his head in the temple of Dagon. When all the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men went and took the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones under the great tree in Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord, and even consulted a medium for guidance, and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel as the Lord had promised through Samuel. David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is, Jebus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, Whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeruiah, went up first, and so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the city of David. He built up the city around it, from the terraces to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city, 
And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. These were the chiefs of David's mighty warriors. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty warriors. Jeshobiam, a Hakmonite, was chief of the officers. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eliezer, son of Dodai the Ahohite, one of the three mighty warriors. He was with David at Pasdanim when the Philistines gathered there for battle. At a place where there was a field full of barley, the troops fled from the Philistines, but they took their stand in the middle of the field. They defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Three of the thirty chiefs came down to David to the rock at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out to the Lord. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? Because they risked their lives to bring it back, David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty warriors. Obishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was doubly honored above the three and became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant fighter from Kabziel, performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who was five cubits tall. Although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand, Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoiada. He too was as famous as the three mighty warriors. He was held in greater honor than any of the thirty, but he was not included among the three, and David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The mighty warriors were Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shameth, the Hararite, Helaz, the Pelonite, Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abiezer from Anathoth, Sibukai, the Hushathite, Eli, the Ahohite, Mehurai, the Netophathite, Helid, son of Beuna the Netophathite, Ithai, son of Ribai from Gabeah in Benjamin, Benaiah, the Parathonite, Purai from the ravines of Gaash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmaveth, the Buharamite, Eliaba, the Shealbanite, the sons of Hashem, the Gizanite, Jonathan, son of Shehi, the Hararite, Ahiam, son of Sekar, the Hararite, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer, the Mekarathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Naorai, son of Ezbi, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mipar, son of Hagrai, Zelik, the Ammonite, Naorai, the Berathite, the armor bearer of Joab, son of Zeruiah, Ira, the Ithrite, Garib, the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad, 
son of Alai, Adonah, son of Shiza the Reubenite, who was chief of the Reubenites and the thirty with him, Hanan, son of Meuka, Joshaphat the Mithnite, Uzziah the Ashtarathite, Shammah, and Jeio, the sons of Hotham, the Aurorite, Jediel, son of Shimri, his brother Joha, the Tisite, Eliel, the Meavite, Jerobai and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnaim, Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, and Jaesiel, the Mizobeite. These were the men who came to David at Ziklag while he was banished from the presence of Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who helped him in battle. They were armed with bows and were able to shoot arrows or to sling stones, right-handed or left-handed. They were relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, Ahiezer, their chief, and Joash, the sons of Shemaiah, the Gibeathite, Jeziel, and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth. Berukah, Jehu the Anathothite, and Ishmael the Gibeonite, a mighty warrior among the thirty, who was a leader of the thirty. Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Josabad the Gedirathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Beuliah, Shemariah and Shephatiah the Harufite, Elkanah, Ishiah, Azarel, Joezer and Jeshobiam, the Korohites, and Joela and Zebediah, the sons of Jeroham from Gedor. Some Gadites defected to David at his stronghold in the wilderness. They were brave warriors, ready for battle and able to handle the shield and spear. Their faces were the faces of lions, and they were as swift as gazelles in the mountains. Ezer was the chief. Obadiah the second in command, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machbani the eleventh. These Gadites were army commanders. The least was a match for a hundred, and the greatest for a thousand. It was they who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it was overflowing all its banks, and they put to flight every one living in the valleys, to the east and to the west. Other Benjamites and some men from Judah also came to David in his stronghold. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you have come to me in peace to help me, I am ready for you to join me. But if you have come to betray me, to my enemies, when my hands are free from violence, may the God of our ancestors see it and judge you. Then the spirit came on Amasai, chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David. We are with you, son of Jesse. Success, success to you and success to those who help you, for your God will help you. So David received them and made them leaders of his raiding bands. Some of the tribe of Manasseh defected to David when he went with the Philistines to fight against Saul. He and his men did not help the Philistines because, after consultation, their rulers sent him away. They said, It will cost us our heads if he deserts to his master Saul. When David went to Ziklag, these were the men of Manasseh who defected to him. Adna, Josephad, Jediel, Michael, Josephad, Elihu, and Zilothai, leaders of units of a thousand in Manasseh. They helped David against raiding bands, for all of them were brave warriors, and they were commanders in his army. Day after day men came to help David, until he had a great army, like the army of God. These are the numbers of the men armed for battle who came to David at Hebron to turn Saul's kingdom over to him, as the Lord had said. From Judah, carrying shield and spear, 6,800 armed for battle. From Simeon, warriors ready for battle, 
7,100. From Levi, 4,600, including Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron, with 3,700 men. And Zadok, a brave young warrior with 22 officers from his family. From Benjamin, Saul's tribe, 3,000, most of whom had remained loyal to Saul's house until then. From Ephraim, brave warriors famous in their own clans, 20,800. From half the tribe of Manasseh, designated by name to come and make David king, 18,000. From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. From Zebulun, experienced soldiers prepared for battle with every type of weapon to help David with undivided loyalty, 50,000. From Naphtali, 1,000 officers, together with 37,000 men carrying shields and spears. From Dan, ready for battle, 28,600. From Asher, experienced soldiers prepared for battle, 40,000. And from east of the Jordan, from Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, armed with every type of weapon, 120,000. All these were fighting men who volunteered to serve in the ranks. They came to Hebron fully determined to make David king over all Israel. All the rest of the Israelites were also of one mind to make David king. The men spent three days there with David, eating and drinking for their families had supplied provisions for them. Also, their neighbors from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali came bringing food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. There were plentiful supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, oil, cattle, and sheep, for there was joy in Israel. David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He then said to the whole assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send word far and wide to the rest of our people throughout the territories of Israel, and also to the priests and Levites who are with them in their towns and pasture lands to come and join us. Let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to do this because it seemed right to all the people. So David assembled all Israel from the Shihor River in Egypt to Lebohamoth, to bring the Ark of God from kiriath Jeorum, David and all Israel went to Baalah of Judah, kiriath Jeorum, to bring up from there the Ark of God, the Lord who is enthroned between the cherubim, the Ark that is called by the name. They moved the Ark of God from Abinadab's house on a new cart, with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God, with songs and with harps, lyres, timbrels, cymbals, and trumpets. When they came to the threshing floor of Kaidan, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died there before God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and to this day that place is called Piris Uzzah. David was afraid of God that day and asked, How can I ever bring the Ark of God to me? He did not take the Ark to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, the Ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed his household and everything he had. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, along with cedar logs, stonemasons, and carpenters, to build a palace for him. 
And David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. In Jerusalem, David took more wives and became the father of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children born to him there. Shemua, Shobat, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpilet, Noga, Nephik, Japhiah, Elishama, Beoliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about him and went out to meet them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of God, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, Go, I will deliver them into your hands. So David and his men went up to baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. So that place was called baal Perazim. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. Once more the Philistines raided the valley, so David inquired of God again, and God answered him, Do not go directly after them, but circle around them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Giza. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all the nations fear him. After David had constructed buildings for himself in the city of David, he prepared a place for the Ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, No one but the Levites may carry the Ark of God because the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister before him forever. David assembled all Israel in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. He called together the descendants of Aaron and the Levites from the descendants of Kohath, Uriel, the leader, and 120 relatives from the descendants of Merari, Asaiah, the leader, and 220 relatives. From the descendants of Gershon, Joel, the leader, and 130 relatives. From the descendants of Elzaphan, Shemaiah, the leader, and 200 relatives. From the descendants of Hebron, Eliel, the leader, and 80 relatives. From the descendants of Uzziel, Amenadab, the leader, and 112 relatives. Then David summoned Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, and Uriel, Asaiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Amenadab, the Levites. He said to them, You are the heads of the Levitical families. You and your fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves and bring up the Ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. It was because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time that the Lord our God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. So the priests and Levites consecrated themselves in order to bring up the Ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the Ark of God with the poles on their shoulders, as Moses had commanded, in accordance with the word of the Lord. David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their fellow Levites as musicians to make a joyful sound with musical instruments, lyres, harps, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed Heman 
son of Joel, from his relatives, Asaph, son of Berechiah, and from their relatives, the Merarites, Ethan, son of Cushiah, and with them, their relatives next in rank, Zechariah, Jeaziel, Shemiramith, Jehiel, Unai, Eliab, Benaiah, Maoseah, Mattathiah, Eliphalehu, Mignah, Obed-Edom, and Jeiel, the gatekeepers. The musicians Heman, Asaph, and Ethan were to sound the bronze cymbals. Zechariah, Jeaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Unai, Eliab, Maoseah, and Benaiah were to play the lyres according to Alameth, and Mattathiah, Eliphalehu, Mignah, Obed-Edom, Jeiel, and Azuziah were to play the harps, directing according to Shemineth. Kenaniah, the head Levite, was in charge of the singing. That was his responsibility because he was skillful at it. Berechiah and Elkanah were to be doorkeepers for the ark. Shebaniah, Joshaphat, Nethanel, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eliezer, the priests, were to blow trumpets before the ark of God. Obed-Edom and Jehiah were also to be doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel and the commanders of units of a thousand went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord from the house of Obed-Edom with rejoicing. Because God had helped the Levites who were carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord, seven bulls and seven rams were sacrificed. Now David was clothed in a robe of fine linen, as were all the Levites who were carrying the ark, and as were the musicians and Kenaniah, who was in charge of the singing of the choirs. David also wore a linen ephod. So all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouts, with the sounding of ram's horns and trumpets, and of cymbals, and the playing of lyres and harps. As the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window, and when she saw King David dancing and celebrating, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and they presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. After David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. He appointed some of the Levites to minister before the Ark of the Lord, to extol, thank, and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, and next to him in rank were Zechariah, then Jeaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jehiel. They were to play the lyres and harps. Asaph was to sound the cymbals. And Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. That day, David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. Give praise to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments 
are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you, I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns! Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out! Save us, God our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen. And praise the Lord. David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly according to each day's requirements. He also left Obed-Edom and his 68 associates to minister with them. Obed-Edom, son of Jeduthun, and also Hosa were gatekeepers. David left Zadok the priest and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord, which he had given Israel. With them were Heman and Jeduthun and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord. For his love endures forever. Heman and Jeduthun were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and cymbals and for the playing of the other instruments for sacred song. The sons of Jeduthun were stationed at the gate. Then all the people left to go to their homes, and David returned home to bless his family. After David was settled in his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. But that night the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought Israel up out of Egypt to this day. I have moved from one tent site to another, from one dwelling place to another. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their leaders whom I commanded to shepherd my people, 
Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name like the names of the greatest men on earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also subdue all your enemies. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. When your days are over and you go to be with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my love away from him, as I took it away from your predecessor. I will set him over my house and my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, who am I, Lord God? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, my God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. You, Lord God, have looked on me as though I were the most exalted of men. What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant, Lord, for the sake of your servant and according to your will. You have done this great thing and made known all these great promises. There is no one like you. And there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth whose God went out to redeem a people for himself, and to make a name for yourself, and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations from before your people whom you redeemed from Egypt. You made your people Israel your very own forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord, let the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house be established forever. Do as you promised, so that it will be established, and that your name will be great forever. Then people will say, the Lord Almighty, the God over Israel, is Israel's God. And the house of your servant David will be established before you. You, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him. So your servant has found courage to pray to you. You, Lord, are God. You have promised these good things to your servant. Now, you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, Lord, have blessed it, and it will be blessed forever. In the course of time, David defeated the Philistines and subdued them, and he took Gath and its surrounding villages from the control of the Philistines. David also defeated the Moabites, and they became subject to him and brought him tribute. Moreover, David defeated Hadadezer, king of Zobah, in the vicinity of Hamath, when he went to set up his monument at the Euphrates River. David captured a thousand of his chariots, seven thousand charioteers, and twenty thousand foot soldiers. 
he hamstrung all but a hundred of the chariot horses. When the Arameans of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zopa, David struck down 22,000 of them. He put garrisons in the Aramean kingdom of Damascus, and the Arameans became subject to him and brought him tribute. The Lord gave David victory wherever he went. David took the gold shields carried by the officers of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. From Teba and Kun, towns that belonged to Hadadezer, David took a great quantity of bronze, which Solomon used to make the bronze sea, the pillars, and various bronze articles. When too, king of Hamath heard that David had defeated the entire army of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent his son, Hadoram, to King David to greet him and congratulate him on his victory in battle over Hadadezer, who had been at war with two. Hadoram brought all kinds of articles of gold, of silver, and of bronze. King David dedicated these articles to the Lord, as he had done with the silver and gold he had taken from all these nations, Edom and Moab, the Ammonites and the Philistines, and Amalek. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, struck down 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became subject to David. The Lord gave David victory wherever he went. David reigned over all Israel, doing what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Zeruiah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilad, was recorder. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were priests. Shavsha was secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was over the Carathites and Pelethites, and David's sons were chief officials at the king's side. In the course of time, Nahash, king of the Ammonites, died, and his son succeeded him as king. David thought, I will show kindness to Hanan, son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent a delegation to express his sympathy to Hanan concerning his father. When David's envoys came to Hanan in the land of the Ammonites to express sympathy to him, the Ammonite commanders said to Hanan, Do you think David is honoring your father by sending envoys to you to express sympathy? Haven't his envoys come to you only to explore and spy out the country and overthrow it? So Hanan seized David's envoys, shaved them, cut off their garments at the buttocks, and sent them away. When someone came and told David about the men, he sent messengers to meet them, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, Stay at Jericho till your beards have grown, and then come back. When the Ammonites realized that they had become obnoxious to David, Hanan and the Ammonites sent a thousand talents of silver to hire chariots and charioteers from Aram Nehuraim, Aram Meuka, and Zobah. They hired 32,000 chariots and charioteers, as well as the king of Meuka with his troops, who came and camped near Mediba, while the Ammonites were mustered from their towns and moved out for battle. On hearing this, David sent Joab out with the entire army of fighting men. The Ammonites came out and drew up in battle formation at the entrance to their city, while the kings who had come were by themselves in the open country. Joab saw that there were battle lines in front of him and behind him, so he selected some of the best troops of Israel and deployed them against the Arameans. He put the rest of the men under the command of Abishai, his brother, and they were deployed against the Ammonites. Joab said, If the Arameans are too strong for me, then you are to rescue me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will rescue you. Be strong, and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. Then Joab and the troops with him advanced to fight the Arameans, and they fled before him. When the Ammonites realized that the Arameans were fleeing, they too fled before his brother Abishai and went inside the city. 
So Joab went back to Jerusalem. After the Arameans saw that they had been routed by Israel, they sent messengers and had Arameans brought from beyond the Euphrates River, with Shophak, the commander of Hadadezer's army, leading them. When David was told of this, he gathered all Israel and crossed the Jordan. He advanced against them and formed his battle lines opposite them. David formed his lines to meet the Arameans in battle, and they fought against him. But they fled before Israel, and David killed 7,000 of their charioteers and 40,000 of their foot soldiers. He also killed Shophak, the commander of their army. When the vassals of Hadadezer saw that they had been routed by Israel, they made peace with David and became subject to him. So the Arameans were not willing to help the Ammonites anymore. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, Joab led out the armed forces. He laid waste the land of the Ammonites and went to Rabbah and besieged it. But David remained in Jerusalem. Joab attacked Rabbah and left it in ruins. David took the crown from the head of their king. Its weight was found to be a talent of gold and it was set with precious stones and it was placed on David's head. He took a great quantity of plunder from the city and brought out the people who were there, consigning them to labor with saws and with iron picks and axes. David did this to all the Ammonite towns. Then David and his entire army returned to Jerusalem. In the course of time, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. At that time, Sibukai, the Hushathite, killed Sippai, one of the descendants of the Rephaites, and the Philistines were subjugated. In another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan, son of Jada, killed Lamai, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. In still another battle which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shimea, David's brother, killed him. These were descendants of Rapha in Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then report back to me, so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My lord the king, are they not all my lord's subjects? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left and went throughout Israel and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all Israel, there were 1,100,000 men who could handle a sword, including 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering because the king's command was repulsive to him. This command was also evil in the sight of God, so he punished Israel. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. The Lord said to Gad, David's seer, Go and tell David. This is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. So Gad went to David and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Three years of famine, three months of being swept away before your enemies with their swords overtaking you, or three days of the sword of the Lord, days of plague in the land with the angel of the Lord ravaging every part of Israel. Now then, decide how I should answer the one who sent me. David said to Gad, 
I am in deep distress. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel, and 70,000 men of Israel fell dead. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But as the angel was doing so, the Lord saw it and relented concerning the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying the people, Enough! Withdraw your hand! The angel of the Lord was then standing at the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with a drawn sword in his hand extended over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell face down. David said to God, was it not I who ordered the fighting men to be counted? I, the shepherd, have sinned and done wrong. These are but sheep. What have they done? Lord, my God, let your hand fall on me and my family. But do not let this plague remain on your people. Then the angel of the Lord ordered Gad to tell David to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. So David went up in obedience to the word that Gad had spoken in the name of the Lord. While Arana was threshing wheat, he turned and saw the angel. His four sons who were with him hid themselves. Then David approached. And when Arana looked and saw him, he left the threshing floor and bowed down before David with his face to the ground. David said to him, Let me have the sight of your threshing floor so that I can build an altar to the Lord, that the plague on the people may be stopped. Sell it to me at the full price. Arana said to David, Take it. Let my lord the king do whatever pleases him. Look, I will give the oxen for the burnt offerings, the threshing sledges for the wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give all this. But King David replied to Arana, No, I insist on paying the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours, or sacrifice a burnt offering that cost me nothing. So David paid Arana 600 shekels of gold for the site. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He called on the Lord, and the Lord answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord spoke to the angel, and he put his sword back into its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite, he offered sacrifices there. The tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses had made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering, were at that time on the high place at Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, because he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Then David said, The house of the Lord God is to be here, and also the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David gave orders to assemble the foreigners residing in Israel, and from among them he appointed stone cutters to prepare dressed stone for building the house of God. He provided a large amount of iron to make nails for the doors of the gateways and for the fittings, and more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided more cedar logs than could be counted, for the Sidonians and Tyrians had brought large numbers of them to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Therefore, I will make preparations for it. So David made extensive preparations before his death. 
Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But this word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood and have fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with you. And may you have success and build the house of the Lord your God, as he said you would. May the Lord give you discretion and understanding when he put you in command over Israel, so that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will have success if you are careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave Moses for Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I have taken great pains to provide for the temple of the Lord. A hundred thousand talents of gold, a million talents of silver, quantities of bronze and iron too great to be weighed, and wood and stone, and you may add to them. You have many workers, stone cutters, masons, and carpenters, as well as those skilled in every kind of work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, skilled workers beyond number. Now begin the work, and the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon. He said to them, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not granted you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hands, and the land is subject to the Lord and to his people. Now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Begin to build the sanctuary of the Lord God, so that you may bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God into the temple that would be built for the name of the Lord. When David was old and full of years, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. He also gathered together all the leaders of Israel, as well as the priests and Levites. The Levites thirty years old or more were counted, and the total number of men was thirty-eight thousand. David said, Of these, twenty-four thousand are to be in charge of the work of the temple of the Lord, and six thousand are to be officials and judges. 4,000 are to be gatekeepers, and 4,000 are to praise the Lord with the musical instruments I have provided for that purpose. David separated the Levites into divisions corresponding to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Mirari. Belonging to the Gershonites, Laden and Shimei. The sons of Laden, Jehiel the first, Zetham and Joel, three in all. The sons of Shimei, Shilomoth, Haziel, and Haran, three in all. These were the heads of the families of Laden. And the sons of Shimei, Jahath, Ziza, Jeush, and Beriah. These were the sons of Shimei, four in all. Jahath was the first and Ziza the second, but Jeush and Beriah did not have many sons, so they were counted as one family with one assignment. 
the sons of Kohath, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Aziel, four in all. The sons of Amram, Aaron and Moses. Aaron was set apart, he and his descendants forever, to consecrate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices before the Lord, to minister before him, and to pronounce blessings in his name forever. The sons of Moses, the man of God, were counted as part of the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses, Gershom and Eliezer. The descendants of Gershom, Shubael was the first. The descendants of Eliezer, Rehubiah was the first. Eliezer had no other sons, but the sons of Rehubiah were very numerous. The sons of Ishar, Shilomoth was the first. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechameam the fourth. The sons of Uzziel, Micah the first, and Ishiah the second. The sons of Mirari, Malai and Mushai. The sons of Malai, Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar died without having sons. He had only daughters. Their cousins, the sons of Kish, married them. The sons of Mushai, Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth three in all. These were the descendants of Levi by their families, the heads of families as they were registered under their names and counted individually, that is, the workers, twenty years old or more, who served in the temple of the Lord, for David had said, Since the Lord, the God of Israel, has granted rest to his people and has come to dwell in Jerusalem forever, the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle or any of the articles used in its service. According to the last instructions of David, the Levites were counted from those 20 years old or more. The duty of the Levites was to help Aaron's descendants in the service of the temple of the Lord, to be in charge of the courtyards, the side rooms, the purification of all sacred things, and the performance of other duties at the house of God. They were in charge of the bread, set out on the table, the special flour for the grain offerings, the thin loaves made without yeast, the baking and the mixing, and all measurements of quantity and size. They were also to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord. They were to do the same in the evening and whenever burnt offerings were presented to the Lord on the Sabbaths, at the new moon feasts, and at the appointed festivals, they were to serve before the Lord regularly in the proper number and in the way prescribed for them. And so the Levites carried out their responsibilities for the tent of meeting, for the holy place, and under their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, for the service of the temple of the Lord. These were the divisions of the descendants of Aaron. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father did, and they had no sons. So Eleazar and Ithamar served as the priests. With the help of Zadok, a descendant of Eleazar, and Ahimelech, a descendant of Ithamar, David separated them into divisions for their appointed order of ministering. A larger number of leaders were found among Eleazar's descendants than among Ithumar's, and they were divided accordingly. Sixteen heads of families from Eleazar's descendants, and eight heads of families from Ithumar's descendants. They divided them impartially by casting lots, for there were officials of the sanctuary and officials of God among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithumar. The scribe Shemaiah, son of Nethanel, a Levite, recorded their names in the presence of the king and of the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites, one family being taken from Eleazar and then one from Ithamar. The first lot fell to Jehorib, the second to Judea, the third to Harim, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth 
to Malkaija, the sixth to Mijamin, the seventh to Hakkas, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jacob, the thirteenth to Huppa, the fourteenth to Jeshebiah, the fifteenth to Bilga, the sixteenth to Emma, the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Habaziz, the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezkel, the twenty-first to Jacob, the twenty-second to Gamal, the twenty-third to Delea, and the twenty-fourth to Maalziah. This was their appointed order of ministering when they entered the temple of the Lord, according to the regulations prescribed for them by their ancestor Aaron, as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded him. As for the rest of the descendants of Levi, from the sons of Amram, Shubael, from the sons of Shubael, Jedea. As for Rehobiah, from his sons, Ishiah was the first. From the Israelites, Shilomith. From the sons of Shilomith, Jahath. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jachameam the fourth. The son of Uzziel, Micah, from the sons of Micah, Shamer. The brother of Micah, Ishiah, from the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah, the sons of Mirari, Malai and Mushai, the son of Jeuziah, Bino, the sons of Mirari, from Jeuziah, Bino, Shoham, Zachar, and Ibrai. From Malai, Eliezer, who had no sons. From Kish, the son of Kish, Jeremiel, and the sons of Mushai, Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the Levites according to their families. They also cast lots just as their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, did in the presence of King David and of Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites. The families of the oldest brother were treated the same as those of the youngest. David, together with the commanders of the army, set apart some of the sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun for the ministry of prophesying accompanied by harps, lyres, and cymbals. Here is the list of the men who performed this service. From the sons of Asaph, Zachar, Joseph, Nethaniah, and Asarila. The sons of Asaph were under the supervision of Asaph, who prophesied under the king's supervision. As for Jeduthun, from his sons, Gedaliah, Zerai, Jeshea, Shimei, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six in all under the supervision of their father, Jeduthun, who prophesied using the harp in thanking and praising the Lord. As for Heman, from his sons, Ukiah, Mataniah, Azil, Shubael, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hunanai, Eliatha, Gedaltai, and Romamtiesa, Joshbekesha, Malathai, Hotha, and Mahazioth. All these were sons of Heman, the king's seer. They were given him through the promises of God to exalt him. God gave Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. All these men were under the supervision of their father for the music of the temple of the Lord with cymbals, lyres, and harps for the ministry at the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman were under the supervision of the king along with their relatives, all of them trained and skilled in music for the Lord. They numbered 288. Young and old alike, teacher as well as student, cast lots for their duties. The first lot, which was for Asaph, fell to Joseph, his sons and relatives, twelve. The second, to Gedaliah, him and his relatives and sons, twelve. 
the third to Zachar, his sons and relatives, twelve, the fourth to Israel, his sons and relatives, twelve, the fifth to Netaniah, his sons and relatives, twelve, the sixth to Bukiah, his sons and relatives, twelve, the seventh to Jesarela, his sons and relatives, twelve, the eighth to Jeshea, his sons and relatives, twelve, the ninth to Mataniah, his sons and relatives, twelve, the tenth to Shimei, his sons and relatives, twelve, the eleventh to Azarel, his sons and relatives, twelve, the twelfth to Hashubiah, his sons and relatives, twelve, the thirteenth to Shubael, his sons and relatives, twelve, the fourteenth to Mattathiah, his sons and relatives, twelve, the fifteenth to Jeremoth, his sons and relatives, twelve, the sixteenth to Hananiah, his sons and relatives, twelve, the seventeenth to Jachbekasha, his sons and relatives, twelve, the eighteenth to Hunani, his sons and relatives, twelve, the nineteenth to Malathi, his sons and relatives, twelve, the twentieth to Eliatha, his sons and relatives, twelve, the twenty-first to Hotha, his sons and relatives, twelve, the twenty-second to Gedaltai, his sons and relatives, twelve, the twenty-third to Mahazioth, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-fourth to Romantiezer, his sons and relatives, twelve. The divisions of the gatekeepers. From the Korahites, Mishelemiah, son of Kori, one of the sons of Asaph. Mishelemiah had sons, Zechariah the firstborn, Jediel the second, Zebediah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, and Eliahoenai the seventh. Obed-Edom also had sons, Shimea the firstborn, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, Saker the fourth, Nethanel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, and Peulathai the eighth, for God had blessed Obed-Edom. <laughs> Obed-Edom's son Shimea also had sons who were leaders in their father's family because they were very capable men. The sons of Shimea, Afnai, Raphael, Obed, and Elzabad. His relatives Elihu and Simukiah were also able men. All these were descendants of Obed-Edom. They and their sons and their relatives were capable men with the strength to do the work. Descendants of Obed-Edom, 62 in all. Mishelemiah had sons and relatives who were able men, 18 in all. Hosa the Mirarite had sons. Shimri the first, although he was not the firstborn, his father had appointed him the first. Hilkiah the second, Tabaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth. The sons and relatives of Hosa were thirteen in all. These divisions of the gatekeepers, through their leaders, had duties for ministering in the temple of the Lord, just as their relatives had. Lots were cast for each gate, according to their families, young and old alike. The lot for the east gate fell to Shelemiah. Then lots were cast for his son Zechariah, a wise counselor, and the lot for the north gate fell to him. The lot for the south gate fell to Obed-Edom, and the lot for the storehouse fell to his sons. The lots for the west gate and the Shalukith gate on the upper road fell to Shepim and Hosa. Guard was alongside of guard. There were six Levites a day on the east, four a day on the north, four a day on the south, 
and two at a time at the storehouse. As for the court to the west, there were four at the road and two at the court itself. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers who were descendants of Korah and Mirari. Their fellow Levites were in charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries for the dedicated things. The descendants of Laden, who were Gershonites through Laden and who were heads of families belonging to Laden the Gershonite, were Jehiolai. The sons of Jehiolai, Sethem and his brother Joel, they were in charge of the treasuries of the temple of the Lord. From the Amramites, the Isharites, the Hebronites, and the Uzzielites, Shubael, a descendant of Gershom, son of Moses, was the official in charge of the treasuries. His relatives, through Eliezer, Rehabiah his son, Jeshea his son, Joram his son, Zikri his son, and Shalomith his son. Shalomith and his relatives were in charge of all the treasuries for the things dedicated by King David by the heads of families who were the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and by the other army commanders. Some of the plunder taken in battle they dedicated for the repair of the temple of the Lord, and everything dedicated by Samuel the seer, and by Saul, son of Kish, Abner, son of Ner, and Joab, son of Zeruiah, and all the other dedicated things were in the care of Shalometh, and his relatives. From the Isserites, Kenaniah and his sons were assigned duties away from the temple as officials and judges over Israel. From the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 able men were responsible in Israel west of the Jordan for all the work of the Lord and for the king's service. As for the Hebronites, Jeriah was their chief according to the genealogical records of their families. In the fortieth year of David's reign, a search was made in the records, and capable men among the Hebronites were found at Jazer in Gilead. Jeriah had 2,700 relatives who were able men and heads of families, and King David put them in charge of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, for every matter pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. This is the list of the Israelites, heads of families, commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and their officers who served the king in all that concerned the army divisions that were on duty month by month throughout the year. Each division consisted of 24,000 men. In charge of the first division for the first month, was Jeshobiam, son of Zabdiel. There were 24,000 men in his division. He was a descendant of Peres and chief of all the army officers for the first month. In charge of the division for the second month was Dodai, the Ahohite. Mikloth was the leader of his division. There were 24,000 men in his division. The third army commander for the third month was Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, the priest. He was chief, and there were 24,000 men in his division. This was the Benaiah who was a mighty warrior among the 30, and was over the 30. His son, Amizabad, was in charge of his division. The fourth, for the fourth month, was Asahel, the brother of Joab. His son, Zebediah, was his successor. There were 24,000 men in his division. The fifth, for the fifth month, was the commander Shamhoth, the Israelite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The sixth, for the sixth month, was Ira, the son of Ikish, the Tekoi. There were 24,000 men in his division. The seventh, for the seventh month, was Helis, the Pelonite, and Ephraimite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The eighth, for the eighth month, was Sibukai, the Hushathite, a Zerahite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The ninth for the ninth month was Abiezer, the Anathothite, a Benjamite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The tenth for the tenth month was Meharai, the Netophathite, a Zerahite. There were 24,000 men in his division. 
The eleventh for the eleventh month was Benaiah, the Pirithonite, an Ephraimite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The twelfth for the twelfth month was Heldai, the Netophathite, from the family of Othniel. There were 24,000 men in his division. The leaders of the tribes of Israel. Over the Reubenites, Eliezer, son of Zikri. Over the Simeonites, Shephatiah, son of Meuka. Over Levi, Hashabiah, son of Kemuel. Over Aaron, Zadok. Over Judah, Elihu, a brother of David. Over Issachar, Omri, son of Michael. Over Zebulun, Ishmael, son of Obadiah. Over Naphtali, Jeremoth, son of Azrael. Over the Ephraimites, Hoshea, son of Azaziah. Over half the tribe of Manasseh, Joel, son of Pedea. Over the half tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Iddo, son of Zechariah, over Benjamin, Jaasiel, son of Abner, over Dan, Azarel, son of Jeroam. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. David did not take the number of the men twenty years old or less, because the Lord had promised to make Israel as numerous as the stars in the sky. Joab, son of Zeruiah, began to count the men, but did not finish. God's wrath came on Israel on account of this numbering, and the number was not entered in the book of the annals of King David. Asmaveth, son of Adiel, was in charge of the royal storehouses. Jonathan, son of Uzziah, was in charge of the storehouses in the outlying districts, in the towns, the villages, and the watchtowers. Ezrai, son of Caleb, was in charge of the workers who farmed the land. Shimei, the Ramathite, was in charge of the vineyards. Zabdi, the Shifmite, was in charge of the produce of the vineyards for the wine vats. Baal Hanan, the Gitarite, was in charge of the olive and sycamore fig trees in the western foothills. Joash was in charge of the supplies of olive oil. Shitrai, the Sharonite, was in charge of the herds grazing in Sharon. Shaphat, Son of Adlai was in charge of the herds in the valleys. Obo the Ishmaelite was in charge of the camels. Judea the Miranathite was in charge of the donkeys. Jesus the Hagrite was in charge of the flocks. All these were the officials in charge of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a man of insight and a scribe. Jehiel, son of Hakmoni, took care of the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor. Hushai the archite was the king's confidant. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, son of Benaiah, and by Abiathar. Joab was the commander of the royal army. David summoned all the officials of Israel to assemble at Jerusalem. The officers over the tribes, the commanders of the divisions in the service of the king, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of all the property and livestock belonging to the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty warriors, and all the brave fighting men. King David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my fellow Israelites, my people. I had it in my heart to build a house as a place of rest for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, for the footstool of our God, and I made plans to build it. But God said to me, you are not to build a house for my name, because you are a warrior and have shed blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, chose me from my whole family to be king over Israel forever. He chose Judah as leader, and from the house of Judah, he chose my family. And from my father's sons, he was pleased to make me king over all Israel. Of all my sons, and the Lord has given me many, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. 
He said to me, Solomon, your son, is the one who will build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever if he is unswerving in carrying out my commands and laws, as is being done at this time. So now I charge you in the sight of all Israel and of the assembly of the Lord and in the hearing of all God, be careful to follow all the commands of the Lord your God that you may possess this good land and pass it on as an inheritance to your descendants forever. And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house as the sanctuary, be strong, and do the work. Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the portico of the temple, its buildings, its storerooms, its upper parts, its inner rooms, and the place of atonement. He gave him the plans of all that the Spirit had put in his mind for the courts of the temple of the Lord and all the surrounding rooms for the treasuries of the temple of God and for the treasuries for the dedicated things. He gave him instructions for the divisions of the priests and Levites and for all the work of serving in the temple of the Lord, as well as for all the articles to be used in its service. He designated the weight of gold for all the gold articles to be used in various kinds of service and the weight of silver for all the silver articles to be used in various kinds of service the weight of gold for the gold lampstands and their lamps, with the weight for each lampstand and its lamps, and the weight of silver for each silver lampstand and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand, the weight of gold for each table for consecrated bread, the weight of silver for the silver tables, the weight of pure gold for the forks, sprinkling bowls, and pitchers, the weight of gold for each gold dish, the weight of silver for each silver dish, and the weight of the refined gold for the altar of incense. He also gave him the plan for the chariot, that is, the cherubim of gold that spread their wings and overshadowed the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. All this, David said, I have in writing as a result of the Lord's hand on me. And he enabled me to understand all the details of the plan. David also said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and courageous, and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. The divisions of the priests and Levites are ready for all the work on the temple of God. And every willing person skilled in any craft will help you in all the work. The officials and all the people will obey your every command. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great, because this palatial structure is not for human beings, but for the Lord God. With all my resources I have provided for the temple of my God, gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, 
I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple, 3,000 talents of gold, gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the buildings, for the gold work and the silver work, and for all the work to be done by the skilled workers. Now, who among you is willing to consecrate yourself to the Lord today? Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. They gave toward the work on the temple of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. Anyone who had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the temple of the Lord in the custody of Jehiel the Gershonite. The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things have I given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, statutes, and decrees and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. Then David said to the whole assembly, Praise the Lord your God! So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed down, prostrating themselves before the Lord and the King. The next day they made sacrifices to the Lord and presented burnt offerings to him. A thousand bulls, a thousand rams, and a thousand male lambs, together with their drink offerings and other sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. They ate and drank with great joy in the presence of the Lord that day. Then they acknowledged Solomon, son of David, as king a second time, anointing him before the Lord to be ruler and Zadok to be priest. So Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king in place of his father, David. He prospered and all Israel obeyed him. All the officers and mighty warriors, as well as all of King David's sons, pledged their submission to King Solomon. The Lord highly exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel, 
and bestowed on him royal splendor such as no king over Israel ever had before. David, son of Jesse, was king over all Israel. He ruled over Israel forty years, seven in Hebron and thirty-three in Jerusalem. He died at a good old age, having enjoyed long life, wealth, and honor. His son Solomon succeeded him as king. As for the events of King David's reign, from beginning to end, they are written in the records of Samuel the seer, the records of Nathan the prophet, and the records of Gad the seer together with the details of his reign and power and the circumstances that surrounded him and Israel and the kingdoms of all the other lands 